Most people assume that because the Halu GT1 Plus has the Qualcomm 3020 chip, it's a better buy than a lot of other headphones near it in price. Today, we're going to examine that and compare them to the Huawei T9T. Now on paper, the Halu GT1 Plus should be the one that wins. But I think as we go down the list of features and the overall user experience, a different picture will get painted. If you would like to purchase either of these headphones, you can do so in the description down below. If you wanna read about it, check out my website. And if you're interested in a written guide of buying true wireless headphones, I'll be introducing that in a couple weeks. Now, first off, let's run down the construction of these headphones. These headphones couldn't be any more different in construction. The case of the Halo GT1 is made of thin, cheap feeling plastic. It has a lid that rattles around a little bit. There is no indicator that tell you how much battery is left in the case, whereas the Huawei T19 have an LCD indicator light at the top of the case that shows you the amount of percentage you have left in the case. It's also a smart case and the headphones begin to pair with each other and to your phone the moment you open up that case. Talking about charging, you're not gonna be needing to charge the Huawei T19 very much as they have a massive 2800 milliamp hour battery in the case and the case itself can double as a power bank for your smartphone. On the other hand, the Halu GT1 Plus feature a 300 milliamp hour battery in the case. The Halus will get you approximately 20 to 24 hours of playback depending upon volume, whereas the Huawei will get you over 100 hours of playback. Talking about the design of the headphones, the Halu GT1 Plus are shaped like small little pills with a indicator light on the side, along with an ear stem and silicone ear plug. It is worth noting that the outside of the Halu GT1 Plus is a capacitive touchpad and this allows for a full controls minus volume. When we compare that to the Huawei T19, the Huawei T19 have a much more ergonomic shape that sit flat inside of your ears and there is a well-defined touch area on the outside of the headphone for controlling playback. It's very easy to position the Huawei T19 in your ears without affecting playback and finding the part of the headphone to touch is also very simple. I would say that a large part of the reason that I like the Huawei T19 so much is that the design of them makes them very easy to control without changing their position in my ears. On the outside of the Huawei T19, it does have a blue flashing LED light and this light gently breathes as you're listening to them. People ask me if there's any way to disable it. And in my specific use case, when I'm wearing headphones like this, it's generally because I don't want people to interrupt me or I don't want people to talk to me, or I just want to listen to music and not be disturbed. Having that breathing light on the outside makes it much more visible and kind of signals to people that you're wearing headphones. I've had people come up to me on the street where I'm wearing other headphones that are more discreet and try to talk to me. And oftentimes that can lead to a bit of an awkward exchange while I remove the headphones and begin to talk to them. For some people, these flashing lights are gonna be a bad thing, but for people like myself, I don't see it as good or bad. And if anything, it's more of a good thing for me. Now talking about some of the specific features between these two headphones. Now the Huawei T19 do feature a gaming mode with reduced audio latency. It's not comparable to the APTX of the Halu GT1 Plus, and I'll have a quick gaming comparison for you guys right here.
As you guys could see, even with the Huawei T19 in gaming mode, it just does not compete with the APTX codec of the Halo GT1 Plus. So if you're looking at a pair of headphones strictly for gaming, the Huawei T19 are not going to be better than the Halo's. Talking about audio codec, now the Huawei T19 do feature AAC audio. It's a different audio codec than the Halo GT1 Plus, which feature the APTX audio codec. You're gonna probably get better sound quality in the codec form from APTX, but on headphones at this price range, you really don't hear a difference. And honestly, at this price point, I don't think that the APTX versus AAC is gonna make much of a difference for sound quality. And we'll get to sound quality in a minute. Next thing is both of the headphones feature some type of clear voice capture on the Halo GT1 Plus because of the Qualcomm 3020 chip. It offers the CVC 8.0, and the Halo GT1 Plus has a okay sounding microphone I don't think it's as good as the Huawei T19C. Now in regards to microphone, the Halo GT1 Plus isn't bad, but I would say that the Huawei T19 does sound better, but you guys be the judge. Okay guys, so next up is the Halo GT1 Plus. Now the Halo GT1 sounded very mediocre when I first got it, and with the inclusion of CBC 8.0 and the Qualcomm 3020 chip, I'm curious to see how much the audio quality has improved. Here, standing on a street in Hanoi, Vietnam, fair amount of background noise. How do I sound? Hey guys, so as I'm recording the audio for this on the Huawei T19, uh, showing you guys a little bit of my neighborhood. Last and finally, both of these headphones feature mono mode and taking either one out of the case allows you to seamlessly start using the headphones. Now let's briefly touch on sound. Now these headphones sound pretty similar. The difference in my opinion is the sound stage. I'm able to get a slightly bigger and slightly better sound stage with the Huawei T19. And what this does is it creates a little bit more definition in the bass. While the Halo GT1 Plus might have a little bit more thump, sometimes the other parts of the bass can be overshadowed by how thick and kind of thumpy that bass is. Whereas on the Huawei T19, the bass is a little bit more defined and it's got a little bit more space to move. While the Halo GT1 Plus might sound a little bit thumpier for electronic music and hip hop, the Huawei T19 sound a little bit more well-rounded in regards to vocals, rock and roll, and just other things that aren't electronic music. In regards to which of these headphones sound better, they sound quite similar, but I would say that the Huawei T19 are a more well-rounded pair of headphones and give you an excellent listening experience to more genres of music. The Halo GT1 Plus really start to fall apart when you take them outside of the electronic hip hop space. And for someone like myself that likes to listen to a variety of music, I think that the Huawei T19 are a better buy. Now let's talk about their usage and what it feels like to actually use these headphones on a consistent basis. Now I said in my last review of the Huawei T19 that these would feel like a very tangible upgrade if you were coming from one of the last generations of Halo GT1s. And even going back and forth between these headphones, I have to say that the convenience and kind of overall user experience that I find using both of these headphones is more enjoyable when I'm using the Huawei T19. A lot of that has to come down to the design of the actual headphones, how they fit in my ears, and how ergonomic the controls are. One thing I definitely want to note on is that when you're using the controls of both of these headphones, the Allway are much more sure about when you're actually reaching the touch area and when you're not reaching the touch area. The Halo GT1 Plus, that's significantly less well-defined and if you're moving the headphones about within your ears, you can either shut them off or actually trigger the controls. In my personal opinion, I think that the convenience and the overall user experience of the Huawei T19 makes them more luxurious, more premium, and the fact that I can have all of the same controls as the Halo GT1 Plus on top of volume control make them a just better overall experience, as well as an experience that I can suggest to more people. When I've let my friends use the Halo GT1 Plus 
One of the first things that people have commented to me on is that the controls seem kind of hard and finicky to use. Whereas the Huawei T19, that's never really a problem because of their overall design. And if I was going to be giving someone a gift that this was going to be their first pair of true wireless headphones or even for personal use, I'm going to pick the Huawei every time. That said, the Halo GT1 Plus are better for gaming. The Huawei are better for battery life. The Halo GT1 Plus are smaller, whereas the Huawei T19 are more ergonomic and easier to use. But for me, kind of the icing on the cake for what makes the Huawei just a better purchase is the design of the case, the overall user experience, and how cohesive they feel as a package. If you guys want to see the independent reviews of the Halo GT1 Plus or the Huawei T19, you can click on either of these videos right here. And until next time, it's been Mitchell. Peace.